everyone. Welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Tom Baker. Sheldon Creed made his first start in NASCAR's Xfinity Series at Daytona over the weekend, driving the Junior Motorsports number 8 Chevrolet. Unfortunately, his first start didn't last that long as a Stage 1 crash sent him to the garage with a 34th place finish. He'll be back in his GMS Chevrolet truck for the Gander Outdoors Truck Series race this Thursday night at the Kentucky Speedway. Brian Henderson ventured north of the border to the racy Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, and he almost had himself a winning trophy to declare at Customs on the way back south. Starting dead last on the field after some early day mechanical issues, his Atlanta Speedwork team gave he and co-driver Todd Lamb an absolute rocket ship for the race. He charged through the field and was fighting for the win late in the going when contact from another competitor slowed him momentarily. He still wound up with a well-earned fourth place finish. Brian will be back in action at the gorgeous Lime Rock Park road course in a couple of weeks. Grant Thompson had a rough weekend at the Sunny South Raceway. He ended up in the wall twice. The team was able to replace the entire rear axle assembly, right front spindle, hub, tie rod, and both right side tires to get him out after the first incident just in time to start last on the field. His day went from bad to worse though on lap one as two cars spun in front of him, forcing him into the wall for the second time and out of the action. He will race at Mobile this weekend. Jaden Walbridge made a milestone on Saturday night at the Super Late Model Race at the All-American Speedway in Roseville, California. He led several laps and finished a career-best fourth place. Way to go, Jaden! He'll next be on track July 27th at the Madeira Speedway. Also finishing fourth on Saturday night was Joey East. The youngster was racing in the Pro Late Model Division at Madeira Speedway in the number 88 Nake Clower Motorsports Machine. He hops behind the wheel of his midget this Saturday night to compete once again at Madeira. Connor Mozak went back to his roots last week at the Bojangles Summer Shootout at Charlotte Motor Speedway, climbing back into a Legends car. His return didn't go as he'd planned, however, as his car caught fire. He was unharmed but relegated to a 13th place finish. He'll return to the seat of his late model stock car at the famed Hickory Motor Speedway this Saturday night. Will Cox also competed in the summer shootout at Charlotte Motor Speedway last week. The Legends rookie finished 12th in a highly challenging Young Lions division feature. He'll be back in action for round six of the shootout right about the time this show premieres on RaceFace.tv. Jesse Love ran two races in two different divisions this past week, starting with a Power Eye National Midget Race at Angle Park Speedway. He started 18th in the feature and worked his way to a 12th place finish. He then traveled to Oregon for race one of Oregon Speed Week at the Siskiyou Golden Speedway, put on by the West Coast Sprint Car Tour. Jesse won his heat race, started seventh in the feature and finished a solid eighth place sending him into the upcoming race two of Speed Week, which takes place at Goose Bay Speedway as this show premieres with a little bit of confidence. Cassidy Hines spent her July 4th weekend racing her 600 micro sprint on the dirt at the Fairground Speedway in Cortez, Colorado. In the winged A class, she qualified fourth, started seventh and raced hard for a sixth place finish. In the non-wing class, she qualified fourth, started seventh, and ran between fourth and sixth for the entire race on a very dusty track that at times challenged Cassidy's ability to see very far in front of her. She was in fourth when the car spun up ahead, and she had to spin her car to avoid contact. She got penalized two spots for being dead on the track, but she still ended up with a sixth place for her efforts. Cassidy will be back in action at the El Paso County Raceway in Calhan, Colorado this weekend. One final high note for this week. Joe Valeno had a very special evening at the Elko Speedway in Minnesota over the weekend. He was there to compete in his Legends car, but he also invited his Friends of Jacqueline Foundation adopted child Wyatt and his family to the track to be a part of the fun. 
Although his results weren't what he would have hoped to achieve, as he had a 10th place finish in race one and then got caught up in a crash in race two, this night will still be one he, his family, and his new FOJ family will not soon forget. Oh, by the way, Joe's next race will be with the Midwest Truck Series in Marshfield, Wisconsin this weekend. Don't forget about the first annual Junior Late Model Challenge Camp being held at Madeira Speedway on August 16th and 17th. Applications are now being accepted through this Friday, July the 12th. The camp is open to young racers from the ages of 10 to 15. 12 racers will be selected from all applicants to attend the camp, and one racer will be chosen at the camp to be awarded a free race in the Nake Clower Motorsports Junior Late Model on Championship Night at Madeira Speedway in October. The camp is being presented by Nate Clower Motorsports, Madeira Speedway, and Raceface Brand Development. It is free to apply and free to attend if chosen. Get those applications in by this Friday, July the 12th. For more information, visit JuniorLateModelChallengeCamp.com. That's a wrap for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. If you missed any of our previous episodes, no worries. You can catch up by going to raceface.tv on demand. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your community. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite Race Face drivers. Go out there and make it a safe and successful racing weekend, everybody. I'm Tom Baker. Thanks for watching.